Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Consider subscribing because I post new writing videos every Wednesday. And today I'm talking about your book and how serious you want to be about it. Rocky has come to say hello. Hello. First up, let me give a little shout out to Chariton.org who sent me this t-shirt from a charity line that helps purchase books for classrooms in Guatemala. This isn't the only charity that they partner with, so be sure to go check them out. My coupon code is 10% down below. Rocky is wreaking havoc in here. <laughs> but seriously, go check them out. This is the cool like right brain, left brain t-shirt. And I'm falling apart. <laughs> Rocky. This is also a t-shirt. I just have a long sleeve under it because it's really cold. All right. With a brand new year comes a lot of new year's resolutions. A majority of those resolutions will be abandoned before March. That's not very motivating, but just hear me out. What's so important about new year's resolutions? Why do people love them so much? I think it's natural for people to want a season of renewed motivation. After all, life is all about cycles, the seasons, the changing tides, life and death. Some argue that it shouldn't be January 1st that finally gets you to focus on your goals, but why not? Discipline and getting things done is a learned skill. The problem lies with those who promise themselves they'll do something and then they don't take action steps to accomplish it. Let's talk about something that may seem odd, changing an unrelated habit to accomplish your goals. Let's talk about keystone habits. Cleaning your house can make you write more. It may take time, but trust me, things like this are like magic. Cleaning may not immediately have an effect on how much you write, but for me, it was a keystone habit, a tiny, okay, not so tiny because I still despise cleaning, <laughs> change in my routine that rippled to other positive changes in my life. I started using the one minute rule, which forces you to immediately tackle those easy cleaning issues before they pile up into a full day cleaning spree. I talked about this last week, but use it, it's amazing. Essentially, if a task takes less than one minute, do it. Do you leave your shoes at the front door when you come home? That task takes less than one minute, so do it now and quit being lazy. If I was about to sit down to write and I glimpsed those shoes on the ground, I would have like a mini internal debate thinking, I know I should have put them up earlier, but do I have time to do it right now? I wanna to get to writing. I'll get to putting them up later. It's a distraction. Eliminating those distractions means I can focus on other things. Even if I wasn't using physical energy every time I would spot that issue, it was mentally pulling me away from my writing. Using keystone habits helps you tackle your goals without even realizing what's happening because you're replacing your bad routine with a good one. Replace the right routine and your goals get themselves done. Keystone habits are covered in The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. I told you guys I would talk more about this book. It has so many things that can apply to writing, so I highly recommend it. There is a link down below for Amazon to go check it out. This video was not sponsored by that book. Now that we've covered how changing your other habits can help you come through on your resolutions, let's talk about other general life habits that can help you be more productive and help you write your book this year. If you're resistant to self-help kumbaya, then prepare yourself because next up is daily affirmations. These are little mantras that are designed to improve your mood, to lift your confidence, and to spark some motivation. Basically, you're brainwashing yourself, but it works. Most writers fill their head with negative comments all the time. When you take time to tell yourself positive things, you're not only stroking your own ego, but you're displacing those negative thoughts. If you spend five minutes telling yourself how awesome you are, that's five minutes that it's impossible for a bad thought to creep in. Do this every day and you can kick those bad thoughts to the curb. Now, I'm entirely new to affirmations and I haven't had the strength to tell anyone that I'm whispering positive praises to myself when no one's looking until now, but I can already feel the effect of it. Say them out loud, write them in a journal. However you do it, just try. Whatever phrases you use, they have to mean something to you. So don't just say the words, feel them. Some examples that you could use. My writing is strengthened by constructive criticism from others and from myself. Or I am not at the mercy of my muse. I can find inspiration at any time. Both of those were stolen from the website listed down below. 
Google for more affirmations that speak to you. Seriously, something happens when you say things out loud using I and me, so just fake it till you make it. Number three, make a routine. Yes, this is boring. I've talked about routines before and I'm sure you've heard it from a million other places, but here I'm not talking about writing routines, although you should have that too. I'm talking about self-care routines. You are a writer. If you aren't taking care of yourself, then you can't do your best writing. The most prolific people utilize routines to help them build a habit of productivity and creativity. Write down your ideal morning and evening routines. The way you start your morning can set the tone for the rest of your day, and how you end your night can affect, can affect how well you sleep, which affects your energy levels for the next day. Personalize your morning routines to fit your needs and your availability. You might not have the same amount of time to get ready as everybody else. Some ideas for morning routines. Journal, write down three things you're grateful for. Seriously, try it. Yoga, it's a great way to sneak in some meditation and it aligns your mind with your body first thing in the morning. No social media in the morning. It's a time suck for us all. Some ideas for evening routines. Take a bath. When's the last time you've done this? If you don't like baths, then you're probably doing it wrong. Add some Epsom salt or magnesium flakes and some yummy smelling suds and light some candles. You can meditate. This is a great way to wind down after a hectic day and it helps you to quiet your racing thoughts. Or no screen time before bed. Keep the screens off for better sleep. Again, personalize it to whatever makes the most sense to your life. Meditation might be taking the time to make a great cup of coffee in the morning. As it brews, take a deep breath of that delicious aroma and just let yourself be. <clears throat> really sorry for my voice. I have no idea what's wrong with it. While it's not the same as a few drops of lavender in a diffuser, it can be just as relaxing to a coffee lover first thing in the morning. Last, treat yourself. In last week's vlog, I talked about using rewards as a way to train yourself to enjoy deadlines. Here, I'm talking about a random just because treat. Make yourself feel good. Recharge. Have you been dying to get your nails done? Do it. Do you miss curling up to a good book and reading all day long? Then sit down and enjoy that time for you, guilt-free. Has it been way too long since you've had a haircut? Treat yourself. It's the best day of the year. The best day of the year. And then go on a date and rock that beautiful new haircut. Sometimes your lack of confidence in your writing can stem from other areas of your life. Take the time to balance your life so that you can tackle your writing resolutions with confidence. Treat yourself. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that was super helpful. Don't forget my debut novel, The Elysian Prophecy, is now available for pre-order available. <laughs> and if you do pre-order, there is a form down below so you can get some awesome swag. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon for notifications so you don't miss a thing. And if you ever have any suggestions for new videos, just drop a line down below. Bye guys. It's really cold. It is seriously freezing. I am feels like, I think it said 26 degrees outside. It is freezing and it's super windy. Florida's not supposed to be like this. <laughs>